Hello guys and welcome back. My name is Annie Pricity and we're back doing some more Minecraft today. Uh, I'm sorry it's been so long since the last video. Life got busy. What can I say? These are some clips of a base I started working on on a 1.17 creative server that we ran a while ago. I was going to make it into a full series about me building this base, but that ended up not actually working out and the series never caught on. So it's just me making the exterior and framework of the base. So I hope you enjoy. Alrighty, everybody. After a little bit of flying around, I have found this little spot and it has some weird terrain generation, exhibit A, um, and lots of weird broken half trees, which I have since chopped down. But I was thinking this might be a cool place to go because it has this little cave entrance and then goes over this way and I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with it yet, but this is what I'm thinking we're going to build. Alright, and we're back. I have uh, started planning out our little mountain range that's going to surround a little cute cottage style village down here. Um, I have, at the moment, just a dirt frame, and I'm going to experiment around a little bit with how I'm going to build the mountains, so I'll bring you back once I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, everyone, we have done some more work. Oh, wandering trader. Uh, filled in the entire sort of blank canvas of the inside. Uh, we still have to do the outside because uh, taking inspiration after some of my favorite content creators, there is no back. We have no back. Um, we're going to now come in with some moss and other leaves and blocks like this and make a nice overhang, mix in different stones, and we're just gonna kind of make it look alive, basically. So I'll bring you guys back when I've made some significant progress. Hi, Phil. Alright, well, I've done some messing around, and I think I like this sort of idea. Obviously, a couple things still need to grow, but I think we're going to use kind of a mix of all of this <laughs> and make the tops of all these areas. All right, now I am working on texturing the stone and figuring out what that's gonna look like. And I currently have sort of like two different approaches. One is kind of more of sporadic little bits of different texture all over the place. And then there's this one, which is more of a gradient going up. And I'm not sure just yet which one I'm gonna use. Um, I might end up using a bit of a mix um, as I started experimenting down here and adding more texture at the bottom and then lightening it up, but we will see what happens. Alright, well after some playing around, I have decided to go with both strategies, the more intense gradient and the sporadic placement. Um, and I'm kind of in here I'm blending them together because I feel like, especially in these sort of deeper areas, it would be a lot darker overall. So I'm just kind of playing with that and working my way around the stone. So I'll bring you guys back when that's underway. All right, so I have finished most, if not all of the stone. I am uh, leaving these areas alone for now because that is my next project. I want to carve out a little bit more of this mountain just because I didn't realize how far in these walls would come, so I'm actually left with a lot less space than I thought I would. So that is the next project, and I will bring you guys back in once I have made significant progress. So I figured for a time lapse like this, it might be nice to have a little bit of voiceover because it can get a little bit boring just watching me break blocks and place blocks and so on. So I actually wanted to ask you guys, what sort of things would you like to see me make videos on in the future? Is it new 1.18 stuff, new blocks, the new update? Is it a collaborative series? Is it a regular series, just me? Is it playing on a public server like Hypixel? Is it 
using some kind of mods or is it not minecraft at all do you want to see among us do you want to see some new game we haven't played before let me know down in the comments and i'll try and do whatever i can So I have cleared out some of this area, sculpting it back so that we have a little bit more space to play with when we build some of the houses. Um, I'm not entirely done with it yet. As you can see, this area in particular looks a little rough right now. <laughs> so I'll work on that. I also worked on this little entrance in the entrance into the little grove. I am gonna do a little bit more work out here course um so now i have special plans for this area you'll get to see that later so now i'm going to terraform and do the stone on these faces that i hadn't done them on yet um and then i'll probably do this top bit all the way around it's going to be interesting to see what i do here because this is fairly flat and how am i going to transition the overhang into regular grass um, also working in the organic mountains will be interesting, but we'll see what happens. All right, so now I am working on a gradient, so I thought it might be nice to explain my thought process because I know other people tell me that that's where they have a lot of trouble. So I'm repeating a process that I already used on the other stone areas where I have a gradient made from deep slate and all the way up through tuff and cobble and all the different types of blocks all the way up to andesite as my lightest block. And so I'm slowly going in tiers up using a slightly lighter block every time. For me, I go from the polished deep slate to this cobbled deep slate and then to tuff for example. And so one thing that you always want to be sure of is make sure that you have no straight lines and that you have some of your next lightness or darkness, depending on what type of block you're using, go into the previous one. So here you can see these tough blocks are being placed in part of the area where there's cobbled deep slate. You don't want just a straight line across. You want to mix it a little bit so it makes it softer on the eyes and easier to see that transition. Another thing that I take into account when I'm doing my gradients is what kind of depth are you working with? So this area here goes backwards and in a little bit more like a cave. So I have the darker materials and the darker gradient for for a higher duration and it's darker which really creates contrast and pushes it backwards into the wall. I think that that helps really push a build over the top. So I could repeat this process and basically do this all the way around taking into taking into account the height of the stone. So a section where the whole thing is higher than this for example I'm going to use more of the lighter blocks and less of the darker blocks. And so now I started working on the overhang. Now part of the reason that I wanted to do an overhang like, like this is because I think it really adds this element of mysticality. So then with all of the fantasy elements I'm planning on adding later, with the houses and the sort of style, the whole theme of this is very mystical. And so I think that these great big bushes and glow berries and things like that really help to sell that element. I also thought that the 1.17 update really added a lot of good natural blocks along a similar color scheme with the moss and the azalea leaves. And so I really wanted to try and experiment with those. And so you'll see here, I did do a lot of 
spamming with bone meal a little bit, which I know is a rather cheap way to terraform, but I actually thought that it fit pretty well. I also wasn't sure what I would later cover with houses, and so I didn't really want to commit to a really deep terraform job if it wasn't actually going to matter later. So there was a lot of that, but there also was a very specific placement of moss in certain areas because the bone milling of moss can just absorb the stone, and I really didn't want to ruin the gradient I had just worked on. One thing that I didn't do on the mountain, which I was originally planning, was to add some custom trees. Now this was partly because, again, without building the houses, I didn't really know the scale or the size or the gravity or the color palette, so I didn't do that yet. But if you would like to see me put some custom trees on top of this in the next video when I add some houses, please let me know and I'd be happy to do that. I'm not sure if I will anyways, but I think it could be really interesting to also push the fantasy effect to be able to add some more round shapes because round things really push the fantasy vibe over the top. It's a trick for anyone who's interested. Round windows really makes it look fantasy-like. Um, so then I transitioned and started working on the entrance. And now the entrance mattered a lot to me because I wanted to make sure that it looked really good and like this magical really mystical thing because an entrance really sets the tone for the rest of the build and so if you have a really good entrance and the rest sucks it's kind of okay <laughs> it sh you still should make sure that you do a really good job on the inside but if you have a bad entrance and then a good inside it kind of is like confusing to the eye because you're like wait i thought anyways so that's why i put in a lot of work to this with the dangling overhanging sort of with the idea that you could almost miss it if you didn't know to check there. Um, miss out on this entire hidden village or like there's some kind of magical thing preventing average people from going inside. Anyways, I got very wrapped up in the story on this one and so you can see that in how meticulously I work on placing all of the little glow berries and light sources and leaves. <laughs> Finally, the little cave area by the entrance. Now, I kept this kind of a secret to myself for a while, but that's mostly because I wasn't entirely sure that I would be able to pull this off, and I didn't want to <laughs> ruin it. But I really wanted to try and incorporate a like geode style little nether portal area. This cave was naturally quite round, and it had a little bit of off center to it which I thought actually would make it even better so I decided to inset the nether portal in the wall and also inset some amethyst into the wall like that they were just scratching the surface at these geodes and trying to basically sell the illusion that the nether portal is a geode and then surrounding the rest in calcite and smooth basalt like you would find in the naturally spawning geodes in the new 1.18 update. And so I thought that adding this purple touch would really, all, again, push that mystical and fantasy element. I find purple to be a very magical color, and a nether portal is a pretty magical thing if you think about it. It's a portal to an entirely different dimension, so it really worked well. It was also another way to give myself a break from terraforming leaves and rock. I thought that it was a nice little element, and it has a nice little bit of contrast. It's something for you to want to explore and do while you're exploring this magical village. And then I transitioned this tough and calcite smooth basalt out into the rest of the gradient that I have next to it, surrounding it to kind of just complete the whole thing. Afterwards, I added a fancy entrance to it too, adding all sorts of green, lush, dangling elements. And with that, it's done.
As I said before, I do really want to do a part two to add some little cottages and buildings and really make a mystical village in this area that we've created. Um, so if you want to see that, please come back for a part two. If you're watching this late, I will have already linked the part two in the end screen theater. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, like the video, comment below, and please subscribe if you can. It's not a binding contract. You can always unsubscribe later. <laughs> Uh, it would be really helpful seeing as I'm still a very small channel and trying to grow, but I sincerely hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye!